hello friends, this is Grace here at the Comfy Nest with Grace on behalf of Craft Around the Clock. I'm one of the hostesses within that group and tonight I am presenting for that group. So if you're not a member, you can go ahead and get the link to that free group where Tracy Campbell um, from she organizes all of the crafters and creators so that we're crafting around the clock basically for you guys. So it's fun because it's free and you get lots of variety of creators and crafters and just really smart creative folks in there sharing their projects. So tonight is part three of the Mother Goose book. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Part three, I did not expect that this would get, you know, stretched out that long, but that's what we're gonna do tonight. And I, I talked, um, I messaged Tracy because this week in the Craft Around the Clock group, um, the theme for the week is scrap wood. So everybody's using scrap wood, except I said to her, you know, I promised everybody <laughs> night three of this project. She said, no, go with it. The scrap wood is a, is a suggested theme, not required. So whew, thank you, Tracy, for relieving that stress for me because I didn't want to let anyone down. That's for darn sure. Hi, Mary. There's a text BFF in the house and there's Nancy. Hello, Miss Nancy. Whoop, whoop, text BFFs. Hey there, ladies. So glad you're here. I'm going to grab the feed here on my um, iPad so that we can get started with the project. And then I'll be able to see what you can see. I need to be able to see that you can actually see what I'm doing. So here is the book so far, okay? So this was a mother, it is a mother goose book. Um, so this is what it came like. Here's, um, I got it for 25 cents at a thrift store, you guys. We're re repurposing a thrift store. And the reason I think it was 25 cents is because the insides have completely fallen out of it. Um, I took apart the binding in the first session, part one. So that would have been two, two weeks ago on Tuesday night during late night crafting. Um, so I took the binding apart. Um, I've left the inside the way it is. The outside matched the same style and we redid. We redid the outside to make this an art journal. And I had this rice paper actually looked a lot like this, I bought a bunch of rice paper from decopagequeen.com, okay? That's where I got this rice paper. And this is what it looks like. She has lots of beautiful designs. I think it's a woman who owns that business. Um, and I bought this one that I, that I glued onto the front of the book. So I glued it onto the front of the book and the theme was very much like this. So I painted all around this and the back and then last week did some stamping on the back to really get it to match so that it looks really more cohesive so the outside's completely ready um so we started that during week one we finished it during week two now last week then we started putting together the insides of the book because all of this that was the inside of the Mother Goose book. Really sweet, beautiful illustrations, Mother Goose tales and rhymes in here. Um, I, this will get used somehow. It will not go to waste, I will not throw it out, but I'm gonna put it aside for now because we are gonna create our own art journal pages and I'm gonna show you how to bind them in here tonight. So that's what we're doing, just to get everybody up to speed. So as you're coming on, make sure that you say hello. Um, even if you're a replay watcher, make sure that you're saying replay, that you're as replay. For every 25 live viewers that I get online, generally what I do is I add names to my prize basket and then I pull names from the prize basket to send people happy mail. All of those announcements happen inside my free group called the Crafty Chicks Club. You're welcome to join that too. But the more that you guys do this, and that is backwards, it spells, look at I'll turn it, magic of Facebook. I will turn it right side up. The more that you guys do that, the more people come on, the more people come on, the more names go in the basket, so it's good for everybody, and it also helps my business just get to meet new people. So that's why we do that. Um, so make sure that you say hello. I'm, I'll get some names in a few minutes to put in the prize basket. That'll give everybody a chance to say hello. I don't know if you're here unless you say hello like Kena just said sprinkled. Thank you for sprinkling, Miss Kena. There's Elisa. I have not seen you in a long time, Miss Elisa. Oh, thanks. She says she loves the way the outside of the book looks. Listen, I can't take credit for any of this, because this was the rice paper. I did paint like the frame around it, the binding and the back. I found matching colors as best I could. These are the three colors that I used. I just grabbed three colors 
that looked like they matched what was going on on the rice paper. And then I used them to stipple on paint and then we did some um, stenciling last week on the back to make it match. Um, I realized after last week that I, I told you we had circles and diamonds, lots of circles, well, two big ones, and then diamonds all over the back of this. So I grabbed those two stencils, but I have not put any circles on here yet. So I think right here is screaming for a circle. <laughs> and probably in this corner, just like on the front. So we'll do that if we have time. We'll do that later. More importantly, let's get to the, the insert. The insert, the pages that you put inside when you're creating a journal, that's called a signature. And a, a journal can have more than one signature, which is a grouping of pages. But in this one, I'm going to just do one because the binding is so skinny. See how skinny that binding is? It's really narrow. And the binding is really like soft because I took it apart. It was all falling apart and the glue and the, the like whatever they used to hold it all together was all coming apart. So I took that all out of there so that I could work with the binding because we need to punch holes in this and then we need to sew our pages into the book. Has anybody ever done this before? Let me know if you've done it. I'd love to know if you have experience with binding your own art journals. You guys, I got a mosquito bag right here on my shoulder. It's itchy. Sorry about that. Mosquitoes were horrendous today. I don't know what woke them up, but they were, you know what it was? It rained. And whenever it rains, they get really excited about the the water. So I'm, I got mosquito bites all over me. Um, Michelle says, yeah, she agrees that we need some circles. <laughs> hey. Michelle, thanks for the stars. Whoop, whoop, she gave me some stars. Elisa says, I'm always here. I watch you every time you're on. Ah, thanks for watching. I have not seen you in the comments then. I'm so glad I caught you. She says she's in, oh no, Elsie's saying she's in Indiana. Oh, I almost mixed the two of you up. Janice shared, thank you for doing that, Janice. Okay, last week, during week two, I started pulling some papers to create the inside of my book. The signature is what we're going to call it. These will create my journal pages. And I told you, I had an old map that I coffee dyed from Alamo Rental Agency. This is really fancy. We're getting all precious about this right here. <laughs> it's from Alamo. The last time I went home to Boston and rented a car, they always give you a map. And I kept it because it's a perfectly good map. I folded it so that this can, this will be the, you know, part of the book that is on the binding. That's the part we'll sew. And when you open it up, it'll be a cool map and it'll have this little flap. So we'll do something with that. I'm just going to show you the things that we picked last week um, during the, the live that we're going to put inside the book. A regular envelope with a clasp. This is just a regular big, I think it's a nine by 12 envelope with a clasp. This is good, I folded it in half. This will be the binding, that will be part of my book. I had a big book of music from a book sale that I went to. I'm gonna make sure it's upside down. They're nice big pages. I grabbed two of those pages, folded them in half. Folding them in half is getting them all ready right here. This will be where I sew them into the binding. Okay, this is legal size paper, regular printer paper in that legal size, not regular size, but legal size. And I coffee dyed it. This one had some doodling and some paint on it for me. Um, I coffee dyed them recently and I showed um, in the Craft Therapy Club, one of my paid membership groups, I showed everybody in that group how to coffee dye your own paper. They smell glorious, but they look super aged they look super aged, like water stained, but we know it's coffee and it smells so good. Um, the This will be part of the book, even with my little doodles on it. So I folded those all in half. You wanna make sure you have a nice crease here. Like use your bone folder if you have one or something <laughs> that um, could give you that nice crease there. That will be part of the binding. This, These papers, this was the first one I worked with last week. These are, this is just the inserts from a package that I got in the mail. Okay, you get a package in the mail whenever you order something and they either use those big plastic bubble things or bubble wrap or peanuts or paper and they crumble it off and they put it in your package. Well, that's what this is, it's packing paper. And I cut it all, I folded it and cut it all so that I can use this as book pages 
in my signature. So I've got my nice crease. And there's a lot of these. There's quite a few of them, actually. And the rip, that was not intentional, but I don't mind. I don't mind. That's going to go in my book. So all we do before we put our pages together in the order that we want them, you just got to get them prepped. So that's what this whole process is. I grabbed several sheets of regular scrapbook paper that um, match the theme. Like if you notice, if I start laying this stuff out, oh, that lighting. Hold on, girls. I might shut this off. <laughs> Hold on. I got to go around because I'm too short. I think the lighting is messing with us again. Someday I'm gonna get this right, ladies. Someday, Gracie Grew is gonna get this right. Okay, so I feel like I'm in the dark, but this is gonna work for you, I think. Um, the, the signature, before you put it all together, you wanna get all your pages prepped and folded. And I was showing you last week how, like, most of this paper, my sister sent me some of this paper and I was like, what am I going to do with that? Like, do you ever get scrapbook paper in a pack or something? Or you get it as a gift or you go to a yard sale and you grab a big pack of paper that's super cheap. And then you get home and you start going through it and you're like, oh, what am I doing with that paper? So I had a few of these pages that I've had for a very long time and I keep passing them up, passing them up, not using them. So I figured they could become part of my scrapbook my art journal so they are scrapbook papers these ones are double-sided these ones are not but it doesn't matter this one even has like wording on the back and the upc code doesn't matter we're going to use it all you have to just start prepping everything and making sure that all of the things that you're picking it's kind of a combination junk journal art journal all of the things that you're picking must be able to fit inside your cover that you're using for your journal. So these are all cut to, or I made sure that they were of this size or smaller, including my packing paper. These are all that size, okay? So we're gonna start creating the signature with all of these collection of things, and they all kind of match. Do you see we've got lots of browns, natural tones, um, my cop, this is an envelope, so it's kind of like that same natural tone. This is my coffee dyed map. See how they're all similar in color and they match the outside of the book. They don't have to match. You guys, when you create your journals and your, your junk journals and art journals, you can do whatever you like. I kind of like them to be coordinated. Even if I'm using junk, I want my junk to be coordinated. Coordinated junk. That could be a whole new thing. I just discovered a whole new thing. Coordinating our junk. Alisa says, I've never done anything like that before. I'm so glad to show it to you. So glad. Diana says, I've never done it, but I want to. Oh, it's so exciting to introduce this stuff to you guys. Hi, Michelle. She says, cool. Hey, hey, BFF. There's Tracy and Debbie, BFF. Michelle loves the music sheets. Yes, yes. Music sheets make great prayer books. Like I get a um, publication every month that has prayers and the mass in it and stuff. And um, those are make great sheets for working with your projects. Like don't just throw them away. <laughs> Text VFF has arrived. Better late than never. Hey, Christy. How are you? Hey, Jennifer. Uh-oh, Michelle says I'm freezing up. Michelle, go out and then come back in and hopefully everything will be good for you. <laughs> Kena says, I'm ready. She's ready to see. Kathy says, it's interesting and it's fun. Hey, sissy. That's my sister, Kathy, you guys. Hey, Ruth. Hello, hello. Organized junk. Someone write that down. I think I'm coining a new phrase for the comfy nest. We love organized junk, right? Why not? And pretty. It needs to be coordinated. Pretty junk. <laughs> coordinated junk. Oh, I got all kinds of descriptors for our junk. Okay, here's all my pretty junk. My pretty junk. Now, I have more junk to show you. Just a couple of things, and then we're gonna, I promise you, then we'll start binding. I'll show you. And we did all of this in the Craft Therapy Club a few months ago. We did make journals. Do I have one of them here? I do, I do. We made junk journals a few uh, months ago in the Craft Therapy Club, and I showed them in the group. This was the, one of the workshops one month. Um, how to create little bands like this is a called a belly band where you can slip little notes or menus or invitations in in these little spots there's like little tuck spots for things that you might want to keep um, pages going every which direction uh, so that you know places for you to write if you want to 
in your journal. It has little tabs. Some of the pages have little tabs. Here's another little pocket. This is a page from a phone book. Um, this is a page from a magazine that I loved. Um, some scrapbook pages. Here's a page from a, a, a calendar that I never used. It was completely blank. We got little secret spots for writing. I think we have some top page, top loading um, pockets too. Is this one of them? Yes. No, it's not. This is a little tuck spot. Just all kinds of goodies in here. We're using all kinds of paper to create envelopes and to create different things in our books that we can commemorate, like use later. Um, use them to hold on to really pretty important things. Um, so anyway, I'm going to show you how to bind tonight. Okay, more paper. So I found these. These, look at the colors. I want you to just focus on the colors. See how they match? I kind of go through my stash of stuff. How many people have a stash of paper? Stash of paper. You guys want to see how long I've had this? It's a little embarrassing. It's not a little embarrassing. It's a lot embarrassing. I'm not going to do the math because it's that embarrassing. I better get my fan on in here in a minute. Look at this. So somebody... Because I used to scrapbook um, ages ago. I used to do scrapbooking. There is a, like a mosquito or something in here bugging me. And someone gave me a calendar book that had all little scrapbook pages on it. So you've got one for every day. And each week was themed. So here's this, like all this paper was themed to match. So that you would have coordinating pages. You, so you want to see how old this is? 2008. Where were you in 2008? In 2008, I had a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And although I had been scrapbooking, I was scrapbooking at the time. Um, it wasn't long before this tired mama stopped scrapbooking. <laughs> so I still have these pages. I use them actually, most often, I use them for putting names in the prize basket. So that was my little note. But I, I do, I cut them up and I use them to put names in the prize basket, but sometimes I go through them and I pull stuff out to use and look at, they match perfectly. This whole week's worth of stuff matches perfectly. So I can use these. Now these will not get bound. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to fold these and sew them in because they're too small, but I'm gonna use these in this book somehow, I promise you. Um, we're going to start putting these pages together in a way that's going to make it pretty. I know. Wow. Right, Michelle? Um, I, am I being seen tonight? No, Candy, I can see you. Hello. Hello, Miss Candy Marshall. Hey, Andrea. Hello. Hello. Oh, my gosh. I got your text earlier. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> so thanks for connecting with me. Okay. We're going to start making these pretties. You can, put, you can put them in any order that you want. Big pages first, little pages first. It doesn't matter. We're going to make one signature. So they all need to have the same fold, the same binding. And I may not end up using all these pages. I know I definitely want to use these two because I don't know what else to do with them. So they're going to go in here. And actually, this one, if it's folded like this and it's in my book, when I open it, I'm gonna have the white side here. So on this one, I'm gonna go just the opposite. I'm actually gonna fold it the other way so that when I open it, I get the pretty girls, okay? And they don't have to go right next to each other. I have bunches of these pages, that legal sided, legal sized paper that I coffee dyed. So I can take some of these and put them in between. And then I like to just randomly have an assortment of different sizes and shapes of papers. And remember, I have all these papers to play with. So then maybe I'll put a music sheet in. Because I want it to be really different when you're flipping through the pages. I want it to be visually interesting. Do you see? So you're going to get like a different kind of page. And then you get to determine what order they go in, right? So let's get our map. That would be cool to have in here because that map, remember, has the flap. So the map's going to be sticking out further than the other stuff. And I like that. The beauty of making your own art journal or junk journal is you get to determine what color scheme you go with, what order you fold things in, what order you put them in in your book, all of that. You get to determine all of that. This is my widest paper um, so I'm going to take a couple of these sheets and actually put them on the very outside so they're the first thing that you see. 
I have lots of this. So there's one. Is that one or two? That's one. Let's get another one. This stuff is thick. The thicker, in my opinion, for my journal, the thicker the better because I like to use a lot of wet mediums. I like to paint. I like to decoupage. So when you're wetting your pages a lot, it's nice to have nice thick paper that can handle it. Um, and I've already coffee dyed some of these, so they're really stiff and ready to take that moisture. <laughs> Mary says, I have clothes older than that, I'm sure. That's funny, Mary. Hi, Deborah Bolts. Hello, hello. Okay, um, so I'm going to take actually these pages, and I don't want this tear in the front. I don't know why. I just don't. So I'm going to put these on the way outside, but I'm going to put the tears toward the back. So I'm gonna put it like this. So when I, because you can envision, when I open my book, this will be the first thing that I see, if that's what you want. And then I'll have one page here, and then I'll get to this pretty floral. Then I'll have some coffee stain. Then I'll have a music sheet. Let's put one of these again in between, so I don't have so many pages that have like some kind of text on them. I like to do a combination of pages that are blank, pages that have something on them. A page that is blank, a page that has something on it. That bug is going to drop me crazy. And actually, which way do I want to go with this one? Let's put this one here. Nope, that stinking bug. Um, no, I do want to go this way with this. See, you can make up your mind. There's more than one bug in here. It's the mosquitoes, you guys. If I kill a mosquito, please don't judge me. It really is bugging me. It's right in front of me. Where did it go? Oh my gosh, this will be a first. Now the fire alarms have gone off when I'm live. I've had shelves behind me fall. The mosquito thing, this might be a first. All right, next up our envelope. So the envelope's super special because it's, now it looks like one page, but you know, we know that there's multiple, like you've got a front and a back. So we got a pocket here. You don't have to keep the pocket. You can glue this all together so that you don't have a pocket. But I like the pockets. So I'm gonna keep that just the way it is. So I have one pocket there and I'm gonna cut. Did I already do this last time? I did do this already last time, I thought I did. I cut the top on this side so that I have another pocket here. So we have like a little tuck pocket there. Ooh, so exciting. All right, let's put this in between the map and the girl so that we have one plain page in between them. And then here's our little spot. Now this is getting really thick. So the next thing to do is to check how thick are we and how heavy is it? How thick is it? Is the binding going to be able to handle this much paper? I think this will be able to handle it, but I'm gonna put these aside because I could use these for another journal sometime. Um, for now, I'm going to put those aside because I also wanted to add something I've not added before that I'm really excited about. <laughs> Grace is wonky. <laughs> Always wonky. If you guys see me doing this, I'm not crazy. It's a bug. Oh, come on. They're trying to bite me. I got bit last night. Oh, I got it, you guys. It fell on the floor. Ish. I got bit last night a whole bunch of times. They're in my house and I don't know. And my kids open the doors and they don't, they stand at the garage and they talk to each other with the door open. And then the flies and the bugs, they come in. Living with a bunch of animals, I tell you, my kids. All right, so that one's gone, that's good. <laughs> Michelle likes the pockets. I like the pockets too, I really do. I am gonna put something I have not put in here before. And that is, this is a piece of felt. It's a piece of felt. Um, but it's, it's, it's nice and thick. It's gonna add texture. It's gonna add visual interest and we can create on fabric. So I would love to put this in here as like a surprise somewhere. Like, whoa, is that a piece of fabric? Why, yes it is. Let's just stick her in the middle here. You can't really get a crease on a piece of felt, but what I can do is know where my center point is. Like this is called finger pressing when you're quilting or working with fabrics, finger pressing it. I know where the center point is. That's my center point. You can kind of see the line where I finger pressed. Um, 
you could get like a hot iron and, and really press it. But that, oh, now we're getting thick. I have one more piece of fabric I think I want to use, you guys. I pulled out actually several. But look at this. This is a, a leftover piece of fabric from a project that I did. I was probably making fabric flowers. And it's a piece of canvas. It's nice and thick. You can see the wrinkles on it. That's totally fine. I think this would be gorgeous in here. I would like to use it. And actually, when I fold it in half, you know, you could do a couple of things. You could cut this off and get rid of it, or we can keep it and, and use it as part of our design. So I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors. And I'm going to, I'm just gonna make that a little more pronounced. So it's kind of like a little fold. I'm gonna leave the back straight, cause that's gonna be, it's not gonna be, if I have other pages in between here, they're not gonna be sandwiched right next to each other. But this section right here, you can see how it's kind of like, it even has stamping on it. Um, I'm gonna neaten that up a little bit. I actually thought about doing this, taking my circle stencil so that, because if you're not like confident that you're gonna be able to give yourself a nice, I would like it to be like two little circles, but if you're like, don't wanna just go straight in and draw them, you could, I could use this as my gauge, but how big do I want these circles? Let's think, like these little, I'm gonna cut little semi-circles into this. Hmm. <laughs> Can we do it, girls? Can we do it? Yes, we can. I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to do this. Just, it's going to give me, a, it's going to look better than if I just eyeball it. I promise you that. Then it's going to be really wide right there. I'm going to come right to the end on this side, but try to keep it even. And I'm going to do the same thing. My, my scraps aren't even as they are. But you see how that those little pencil marks are going to give me better looking half moons than what I had going there <laughs> because they looked almost torn. Are they going to be perfect? Heck to the no. If you're into perfect, you can get super like uber straight with your ruler. That's just not me because it takes all the fun out of it for me. That is definitely not straight, but I'm going to make the other side match. They're both going to be wonky. <laughs> well, if one's going to be wonky or one could be straight, it's your journal. When you're creating your own journal, you do what you want, girlfriend. As I always say, you do you. Okay. So see, now I have this pretty little like flap to grab it and flip it. I think that's cute. Super -y. Okay. And I want to fold it straight in half. This is it. This has got to be it because we've got a lot of work to do to get this all bound together. I have a lot of pages here. One final run through. So if this is my cover, before we start sewing, and we're going to hand sew. There's no machine involved here. We're going to figure out, is this what we want for pages? And we just flip, kind of pretend like, oh, this is going to be my art journal. So if I want to create in this art journal, is this the order that I want things to go? I'm really pretty happy with it. Maybe I should put this right in the middle. <laughs> and it's, 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 there's no right or wrong, you guys. There's no right or wrong. But here's one thing I will tell you that is important. We're gonna work with this binding to get it ready. Um, and you're gonna have to punch holes in your binding and then you're gonna sew with any kind of thread that you want. Um, like this is thick material, we got a lot going on here. So I'm gonna actually use jute rope. I love using jute rope for mine, but a lot of people use like a waxed thread. Some people use embroidery floss. Um, some people use ribbon, thin ribbon, totally up to you. Not regular thread, not like sewing machine thread. That's not what I'm talking about. But you're going to need something thicker to hold all this stuff in place. This is getting rather thick. It is, but I love all these pages. I love all the variety here. I think I'm going to have to lose one. If I have to lose something because I really want to keep the fabrics. Tell me in the comments. Vote for me. What would you lose? I think I will lose one of these pages 
maybe I'll lose two things. If you gotta pull something, so this is where you gotta just make, you gotta bite the bullet and make a decision on what's gonna stay and what's gonna go. This page is rather flimsy compared to this. So I am gonna put this on the outside. And then what you have to think about, we're going to sew and we're going to punch holes through the binding and I'll do three holes, one, two, three, kind of centered. So all of the pages, you want them to line up with where your holes are going to be so that you're, you're going to want to have three holes in every single one of these pieces of paper. Otherwise, if this one's way down here and that only has two holes, it's probably going to hang kind of lopsided. So you want everything to have three holes. So you line everything up. If I gotta lose one more, what are you guys voting? What would you lose? I might lose the map, you guys. <laughs> Kathy says this is a great idea, I love it. It's such a fun way if you have like, like old important things like newspaper clippings and like I said, like invitation, like a wedding invitation. Think about it, a wedding invitation, newspaper clipping from it and being in, in the old day, they used to put wedding announcements in the newspaper that could go in a book and it could be a commemorative book, like a, a memorabilia book about a particular event or something important in your life, time period in your life. Um, the baby announcement, maybe it's a baby book with the baby announcement that you send to your friends and family, the one that's in the newspaper, the one that they do at the hospital page, you could print that out and put it in there. Okay, should I lose the map or keep the map? I'm thinking to lose the map. I, I love the map, but it's getting rather thick and we need to make sure that it's not so thick that it won't stay in place. So when I fold this up, look at all those pages I'm gonna have. They're fabulous, but they're thick. All right, now let's get our binding ready and then we're gonna get this ready to sew in place, okay? So the first thing we need to do with this binding because it's kind of flimsy like that. I don't like that. I want it to be more solidly in place. So I'm going to take some wide art tape, masking tape, duct tape, any tape that has some stick to it. Don't use washi tape for this. You can use lots of washi tape in your art journal, in your junk journal. Don't use it for securing your binding because it doesn't have great stick. It's very pretty. So unless you plan on reinforcing your washi tape, don't use it for this part. I know <laughs> Michelle says she loves the map. Maybe it'll go back, Michelle. I don't know. You guys vote. What should I pull out? Kathy says, keep it. Leave the map, Don says. Something's got to go, girls. Mary says, I love that. I have wedding stuff saved from 2006. Now, wouldn't that be a great idea to put it all together? And if you, it's, that would be a great wedding gift. Like, before she is married, right? Give her a, a memorabilia book that's made up maybe, maybe of important things in her life his life together in the book like they can even be copies of things like um their engagement announcement or their prom picture if they were together at prom or whatever like their their most recent vacation you could print those things out put it together with you know recent newspapers a gift bag from a gift that they gave you or something like that and then you could give it to them before the wedding and she could use it to commemorate like her bachelor party or shower her bachelorette party, the shower, the wedding itself, and she can write notes and memories. Oh my gosh, the ideas are endless. We need to bind this is where I'm going. And we are going to, I'm going to, I am going to cut this straight. I usually don't care, but I'm going to try to be a little neat about this. And I'm going to line this up and I'm going to, I don't care if it gets wrinkled, but I want this to go the extent of this page and we're trying to secure this binding and give it a little bit more um, strength. Now, I have some great tape that is for uh, framing that I almost pulled out, but it is extremely strong. You need something strong, and you want something that's going to be wide enough, or if you have something thin, do two strips of it or three strips of it, like, over each other. But we want to try to secure that and give it more strength. I may just put one more... And I know it's going over my pretty illustration that I love so much from the Mother Goose book, but let's be real, I'm going to eventually, I'm guessing that I'm gonna eventually paint over these. I don't know yet. But that's the beauty of an art journal. You get to decide. 
It's your art journal. You can do whatever your little heart desires in your art journal. Nobody can tell you, and you don't have to show it to anybody. It can be a private journal just for you to express yourself creatively, use your supplies, use your junk, and have some fun. I'm gonna find the smallest piece of paper in this stack. This piece of paper goes the whole length of my book. So does this one, pretty much. We want these all centered on top of each other. This one, this next one is pretty darn small, um, but I'm gonna just really quickly look through all of these and I'm looking for the one that's the most narrow. It's this one. So it's gonna be super important that the three holes that I put in my binding, one's gonna go in the middle of this and then you want them to be probably at least three quarters of an inch from the edge of your shortest sheet, your shortest piece of paper, okay? Um, you can get real creative with this, but I'm gonna keep it very basic. We're gonna center everything and then we are gonna base our holes on this. Okay, so I'm gonna take this because it's the smallest, it's the shortest of all of the pages. I want it right in the middle. So I'm gonna come back to this and you can, if it makes you more comfortable. I usually don't do this, but for the sake of binding 101, I'm gonna show you. If you take your ruler, it's 12 inches. So the six inch mark is the middle. So I'm gonna make a marking on my binding. Where's my binding right there? I'm gonna make a mark on my binding at the six inch mark. Actually, it's actually 12 inches, this, this graphic. There's about an, an eighth of an inch or a 16th of an inch on um, of the, the outside of the book framed around, but I'm gonna base it on this piece of paper, this this graphic, um, the, the illustration is like glued. It's on a piece of paper and it's glued to this the inside of the book. I'm gonna base it on that. Um, I wanna find the, the, the center of the book where I'm gonna poke the hole and that's the six inch mark. I don't usually mark it, you guys, I eyeball. Oh, that's just me. But if you wanna be sure, <laughs> then Logically, if I did three inches and three inches, so at, at marker three, six, and nine, those would be equally distant apart. But if I did that, is it gonna be one inch and one inch in? Is it? I don't know, let's see. Oh my, yes, it is. That is a lucky duck situation right there. Lucky ducky, because I'm gonna be able to use that little piece of fabric that I wanna use, it's like a little piece of canvas, and I'm going to be able to have these be equally distant. And the, the reason why we want these equally distant is because we have so much garbage going in here. We got so much pretty junk, I should say, going in our book. It's gonna be important that the binding holds everything in place. And the smallest piece of paper in your um, book is, is is gonna be really important because imagine if I only poked, if it was way down here and I poked the two holes here, this is gonna be off a little bit. It could be, doesn't mean it will be, but it could be. And we don't want it to be off. So here's what we're gonna do. Again, let's get these all lined up. We've got them folded. This one's the most flimsy, it feels like of all of them. This is a little bit tedious, but it's not hard to do, folks, okay? We're gonna line these all up. And we want, I'm gonna stand up because I need to see. We're gonna center them all. And truthfully, you guys, I don't get all precious about this. I usually just like stuff them in there. I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to win any awards here. This, I want it to be equally distant from here and here to make sure, again, it's a shorter piece of paper that it's gonna be bound properly. Then we have the music sheet. It's longer than these two. It's a little bit longer. Just want to make sure it's centered. Then this one's kind of short. I want this one next, but I want to make sure it's centered to that middle spot, which is about right here. I don't know for sure, but it's about right there. You see how we're just lining everything up so it's centered. Now, I'm keeping this super basic. You do not have to keep everything lined up like this. You can get all wonky on your good old self and complicated about it, but I'm trying to keep it simple just to illustrate how to do this. This one's a big one. Here's my envelope. And see, I'm not measuring, I'm just kind of eyeballing. And then here's my fabric. Now, 
here's everything and it's wonky goodness here's my center now I need my center so I'm actually going to use my ruler like this to hold my center and I'm going to fold everything over this is thick it's thick but we can do it and now what I want to do is I want to mark you don't have to do you don't have to mark a lot of times I don't mark to be honest with you I'm gonna mark this piece of paper where my little markings are on my binder because those need to match up okay then I'm gonna put this aside and very carefully because I don't I just did all that work to line it up I don't want to screw it up we need to get the holes where those little markings are. So I'm gonna use my Cropodile. Someone's gonna ask what it is. It's from Memory Keepers. It's in my Amazon store. It is a hole punch. But unlike a traditional hole punch, traditional hole punch, <laughs> I can only go this far. I can't even get it in there actually because it's the binding is too thick. Like they're very, very limited. A regular hole punch is very limited. The Memory Keepers 2 hole punch, I can go a full, how many inches is that? About more than six inches in on something and it can accommodate really thick stacks, okay? It also does brads, it will do nail brads, but I, this is a hole punch basically. So I'm gonna take this in and what I usually do, I see where the hole is like there's, there's two different hole punches here. One is bigger and one is smaller. And when I depress this, you can see the little thing come down, the thing that's gonna punch the hole. So I usually just eyeball it, guys. I'm gonna go in until I see where that little hole punch is and I keep depressing it until it's on my little marking. And it, it goes through thick. It'll go through thick stuff, that's why I love it. It's super handy to have in my paper stash. Now, I don't normally get too worked up about things being super precise. It's just me. If you get really excited about preciseness, <clears throat> my sister Kathy, <laughs> she's a perfectionist for sure. It's probably driving her crazy that I'm not really paying that much attention to this, but if that gets y'all excited, then be precise. It, it, it stresses me out. It doesn't get me excited. Ooh, no, it's getting me excited. The fact that I'm sweating now. It was 44 degrees this morning when I woke up. So I needed a little, I needed to have a little. That's not, okay, there are my three holes. Can you see them? Yeah, my three holes in my binding. That's how we're gonna sew all this stuff in. So this is done. Now on these, my pieces of paper, what I usually do you guys, if you could see the mess, oh my lord, off camera, if you could see the big old fat mess I got going on here, you would be laughing along with me. I usually use these binders. If you have just a little mini journal, you could use paper clips. I don't have a mini journal. I got a big old pack of stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these binder clips to try to hold much of this together. The challenge is now some of the pages are way in, so I'm not gonna get to them. Like my binder clip isn't gonna hold all of that together. But this will help you a little bit <laughs> to keep things together because now we gotta punch a hole through all of this. And I think, I think my Cropodile's gonna be able to do it. Um, I'm gonna flip it this way because that's where my, th those are where my pencil marks are. Right there, there, and there. And you can see, I am not, I don't, it's not all perfectly straight. I don't care. I don't care anymore. You know that song, I don't care anymore? I'm gonna just make sure I can get all of this stuff through here. And this is probably the messiest journal demonstration you've ever seen in your life. But I am the messy, lazy crafter. I always tell you guys that. I can see my little pencil mark, I think. if I had some uh, readers on because I think that's a pencil mark or is that a flower? Let's see. No, that's a pencil mark, girls, right there. I see you, pencil mark, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to keep bringing my thing down until it hits and then hope that I'm in the right place. Punch through all that. Like, it's like nobody's business. It punches right through it. 
And then here, if my lines are a little wonky, you guys, you can tell I don't care. I don't care, but it really does help to keep it all together because, make sure I have all the layers. When you go to sew it, you're gonna want all this stuff together. It's just so much easier if it's all together nicely. Okay, so it would have been much easier if I had used a paper that I that you could see the pencil marks better. I'm sorry about that. This floral is not the best for that. But I have my three holes. I can put this aside now. I don't need that anymore. What we need to do is to start sewing. How are we doing on time? We're gonna finish this. That's what we're gonna do. I think I'm the last person tonight, so I am gonna go ahead and finish this. Okay. Oh, this guy moved completely on me, so this is going to be totally wonky. Actually, look at it. That one's really wonky. I fold it there, and then I'll just have one long one and one short one. See how I solve these problems? It's it's just it's not going to hurt anybody. Um, some people will use what's called an awl. Do you know what an awl is? A W L is the name of the tool. I'm gonna make two more marks because two of my holes on this one are really wonky. It's because I couldn't get the clips on it, but I like having different sized papers, so I'm running with it. I'm gonna punch two more holes. I don't mind that there's holes in my fabric because I will end up covering much of this, you guys, with decorations when I'm done with all this. It'll get all prettied up with other stuff. Okay. Um, some people use an awl, which is, it looks like a screwdriver, except it just has a point on the end. And you can poke it through your papers, but I like to use my crocodile. All right, let's see. We're gonna line up all those holes. There we go. Now we gotta get our, our thread ready, and I'm gonna be using regular jute rope. And I used a tapestry needle because they have a really big eye on them to get that through there so that we can sew this through. Okay, so we need a lot of this. And we're gonna start in the middle because I have three holes. So I'm gonna start in the middle, the middle hole. Oh, and it's really helpful if you can keep all this stuff together. But we're gonna start middle hole. Um, yep, yeah, that's the right one. Now I have two holes on that. And we're gonna start putting this thread through the middle hole of all of the papers. I put the needle right through there and I'm gonna pull this thread through here. And I like, I usually do the bigger hole. I did the smaller of the two this time. I should have done the bigger one. But it's paper, <laughs> so it usually, it's pulling right through there. That's what you want. Went right through. Now we gotta get it through the board, the, the, the actual book. So we're gonna open our book up. We're gonna sandwich them together. And now this needle and thread that is through all of my pages here, I'm gonna put it through my book. It's that easy, we're sewing it together. There, see that? Really big. And you wanna make sure that you don't pull things too, too tight because it'll be really hard later on you, so keep it loose. And I actually don't untie, I'm not gonna untie this until I absolutely have to. You wanna leave a long tail um, because we're gonna tie it in the middle here. So this, now you poke it through one of the other holes, the bottom or the top, doesn't matter which one, just start somewhere. And what I usually do is I poke it through the, the book part first. Come on. I think I can't see, like, I'm having trouble seeing. Okay, there we go, because the light, all right, so it's, it. I had to turn the lights down so you guys could see this well, but um, it's actually pretty dark for me in here. <laughs> okay, so there. Now it's through. We're gonna put it through the rest of the papers now. Third hole. Get all of your pages together. All, most of my holes are together except this darn fabric that I was so insistent on having in the middle. <gasps> and I forgot to put the map back in, you guys. Look at it went through all of these pages just fine. There's my needle. Went through all the paper pages, fine. It's this stinking, this one right here that's giving me the trouble. <laughs> but I really wanted this fabric in here. Oh, and I put it backwards, but it's okay. All right, so that's gonna go there. Now, I want it tight. So you wanna make sure that that part is tight. 
Um, but I don't think I have enough rope here, so I'm gonna pull through. I'm gonna pull some more through because I want to have enough of this so that I can get through. I have to do a several more threads. You're going to go back through the middle. This is taking longer than I thought, but it, it's, it's okay. Back through the middle. I'm so sorry if I'm running over time. And that only matters for Miss Tracy and that craft around the clock group. Um, but I think I am the last crafter tonight. Okay, back through the middle on both layers. This is so easy, you guys. It just takes time, it's tedious, but it's not hard to do. And it does really help if you have a needle. A darning needle some people use. I'm using a tapestry needle just because they have a really nice big eye so you can get thick things through them. All right, so that's done. And I wanna tighten things to make sure, you want it taut, but not like uber, uber tight, okay? So you want it tight enough so that it's gonna hold all your pages in, but not like bending things, okay? So we got that whole section done. Now we just have to run it through the top. Gotta to get through the book, through the paper. Are you guys still with me? Through the book. Make sure it's taut through the paper. And make sure you have enough. You want to make sure you have enough. See, it went right through all those papers because they're clipped together. So they stayed together really well. It's just this one piece here that was flopping around. I should probably, in, in hindsight, I probably should have put that in the way middle of all those pages. Okay, now we have this tail here and we have this tail here. So we can tie these together now and that's going to be our book. So I'm going to take this out from the needle. And now I just wanna make sure that everything's tight, okay? And I can cut this now because I know I have enough. I always make sure I have more than enough. I'd rather have more than enough than not enough when you're finding a book. Okay, here's one tail, here's the other tail. These are gonna get tied together and it's gonna hold the whole book together. But I don't want it floppy like this. So now's the time I go in and I'm gonna pull everything really tight. So I'm gonna come from here and pull this tight. See, that had a couple of inches of wiggle room. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna pull this really tight, making sure that these pages are really in the middle of the book and tight. Make sure this one's tight. Yeah, that's as tight as I think I'm gonna get it. If you are using a background that's not, this is an actual book background. If you are using a background that is not a book like this, not a cardboard, be very careful. If you pull too tight and it's a paper, it will rip. I know this from experience. Um, now, everything should be in place. I'm just gonna get to the front here. Yep, everything's in place. Now, I'm gonna take the clips off and I'm gonna tie and then this is done. This is done and then you can start creating and crafting in it. Again, I want this to be nice and taut. So what I usually do I usually do a knot first and then you can make a pretty ribbon. And what's really a great idea, if you do this on the outside of your book, this tie, even if it's, a, if it's on the inside of a book, a lot of people will leave this hanging down low and they'll put little charms on it so that they hang down low and you have little charms coming out of your book. I don't know if I wanna do that, so I'm gonna cut these long enough so that if I choose to, these little things can hang down low and I can put little beads or charms on here, which can be really cute. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Our book. So there's the binding. See how nice and neat that is? It was that simple, you guys. That simple. Now, when I come to my book, the, the pages are going to have to like, you know, they have to get like the memory. <laughs> the memory of this is where you're supposed to fold. And you're gonna start working with your pages to make sure that everything folds and opens correctly. But now look at all these pages that we have to create on, write on, um, take pictures into, or we can create little pockets so that we can keep like movie tickets or invitations or letters or recipes from grandma. I love this, I love the fabric. I love the fabric and it's backwards to me. I, I meant for this to be in front, but truly, let me get that off there. I could, boy, I could make this a flap. 
I could make that a flap and put a couple of stitches or glue those so that I have a little pocket there. <gasps> so exciting. And then I have my pocket here. I have my little pocket here from the envelope. And eventually, oh my gosh, you guys, we got this to play with because we can sew stuff onto like the, the pages that are fabric. You could sew onto paper too, but it, I think it's going to stick a lot better on fabric. Look at all these pages, you guys, to decorate and play with. This is what your art journal is always going to start out like, your art journal junk journal. And then you have this great book that you can that you can create in. Eventually, when you're all done with it, because this is a brand new journal now, so now the fun part is creating and playing and making it all pretty on the inside. Eventually, because these pages were all like that too, a lot of these pages were blank, like they didn't have any decorative part to it. So we we added other things to these pages to make them all decorative. Pockets and folds and tucks and like little embellishments. Um, so now we can do this with this book. What do you think? Do you think you could handle that? It's just sewing. You're just sewing all of these beautiful pages and envelopes and pretty junk into your book. And then over time, you're going to start, like here are all these pages that match, right? So I can make little pockets or I can put little um, belly bands in here. These are going to get used in here somewhere to decorate and make all of these pages pretty and to, to create all those little spots for commemorating and memorializing certain things. And then eventually, I probably will end up doing something over the inside so that it matches, even if I just paint it. I'm not sure. Haven't decided yet. I would love to know what you think of this project, you guys. I know, I saw the comments, leave the map. I didn't get to leave the map. I didn't. Mary says she loves it. Michelle loves it, oh yay. I'm so glad you guys love it. I'm sorry I went over time. I do feel bad about that. Let's get a couple of names in the prize basket and then we'll call it a night. Um, I'm gonna go through the comments. I'm gonna go all the way to the beginning. And then I'm just gonna randomly scroll through the comments and where my eye lands. Um, the first one is Alisa Fannin. Alisa, she says, hello, text BFF. Your name is going in the prize basket. So I announce winners. I announce the names that go in the basket and winners inside the Crafty Chicks Club. So Elisa's name is going in and I will pull a replay name. So make sure that if you're catching the replay, you let me know. The next one is Elsie from Indiana. So we got the E's. Elsie Austin from Indiana. Your name is going, oh, it's not August anymore, Grace. I like to put the date. So if I have to try to find these people, if they win, I have a date that I can try to find them in. Um, next name that I see is Tracy Sipling. Text BFF, she says. That's the comment. Tracy, that's getting your name in the basket. So there are three names. I'll pull another name tomorrow. And the names have been in the prize basket since February, you guys. So if your name is in that prize basket since any time since February, you could potentially win some happy mail for me. So there's that. If you guys have questions about anything that I offer over here at the Comfy Nest, I have um, a new napkin and wood house um, bundle in the shop at thecomfynestwithgrace.com. Also, um, the Napkin Lovers Club those boxes for that quarterly subscription go out tomorrow or not tomorrow next month in october so you have like limited time to sign up for that the waitlisters have first dibs on that tonight at midnight is the the last day that they they it's not that they can't enroll but i offer them an early bird gift and so that gift goes away tonight and then you guys can enroll anytime between now and the end of the month to be included in that quarterly box yes you did get that <laughs> Good night, good night, you guys. All right, many blessing. Thanks for being here. Sorry I was late to those of you who are trying to keep up with everybody. Um, join the Craft Around the Clock group. The, the link is in the description of this video so that you can join and enjoy all of the replays, all of the live videos from all of the beautiful, creative, fantastic ladies in that group. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.